It is necessary to say that coronaviruses are a large group of family of viruses transmitted between animals and people that can cause illness that can get from mild to severe disease. COVID-19 is a type of coronavirus that was first identified in Wuhan, China in 2019, and its origin is still unknown. This infectious disease is caused by the novel coronavirus called SARS-CoV-2. COVID-19 includes several symptoms, and in some cases, when this flu complicates, they can be referred to pneumonia, kidney failure, and death can be as well present in some situations. We can say that coronaviruses are usually transmitted through droplets caused by sneezing or coughing, and by touching a surface or object that has the virus in it, and then by touching your mouth, nose, or eyes. However, the exact dynamics of the virus are yet to be determined. There is currently no vaccine or medication against COVID-19. And it is important to know that the best way to protect ourselves is to avoid being exposed to the virus that causes COVID-19. We'll be talking about the structure of SARS. The SARS is coded by four structural proteins, which are the following. S, which stands for spikes, M for membrane, E for envelope, and N for nucleocapsid. The glycoprotein spikes function is to attach the virus to the cell membrane by interacting with the host's receptor, initiating an infection. The membrane's function is to relay signals between the cell's internal and external environments. Also, it transports proteins, moves molecules and ions across the membranes. The small envelope might help viruses avoid the host's immune system. Glycoproteins on the surface of the envelope serve to identify and bind to receptor sites of the host's membrane. The viral envelope then fuses with the host's membrane, allowing the capsid and viral genome to enter and infect the hosts. The nucleocaspid phosphoprotein is a unit of viral structure consisting of a capsid with an enclosed nucleic acid. It is generally inside the cytoplasm, and depending on the virus, the nucleocapsid may correspond to a naked core or it can be surrounded by a membranous envelope. This one is the most abundant protein in the SARS. Finally, we have the RNA, which is the essential genetic information it has inside to keep evolving and reproducing. On March 11, 2020, the World Health Organization decided to define the outbreak of COVID-19 as a public health emergency of international concern. Later on, it was declared as a global pandemic. For instance, it is said that experts believed that a flu pandemic was only a matter of time and that the world was totally not ready for it. Well, now we can see that all those predictions about a lethal virus that will kill many people around the world were in fact true and we're all living its consequences. The fact that the coronavirus disease can be characterized as a pandemic is due to the increase in the number of cases outside China and that the virus has been affecting a growing number of countries. In other words, COVID-19 is a pandemic because it has officially spread around the world and the number of cases, deaths and affected countries will continue to climb. The ACE2 protein is mainly present in your oral mucosa, considered the first route of entry to your organism. The virus gets in through your nose and mouth and gets attached to your respiratory tracts, damaging the cilia that protect your lungs, the trachea and the bronchi from wastes. This results in inflammation and this inflammation causes a dry coughing and uh, problems with breathing. When the virus enters the cell, its ribosomes are used to create proteins as glycoprotein spikes using the virus RNA. Then, vesicles transport those proteins until they attach the cell membrane, converting your old and healthy cell into another virus ready to repeat the process. At this point, the virus has already passed lines 1 and 2 of defense, which means it's necessary that lymphocytes, which are the white blood cells, start acting as heroes immediately. The activation of B and T cells are caused by the presence of antigens, which are foreign organisms that activate an alarm in the immune system, calling for help as the body is being invaded. 
These lymphocytes are released as they are capable of recognizing specific antigens present in our bodies. Bonjour, je suis COVID-19. Je suis un virus contagé, donc pour ça, il faut se laver les mains et il ne faut pas se toucher le visage. Il faut faire une activité intéressante comme du sport ou de l'exercice. Il faut consulter un médecin si vous avez de la fièvre, de la toux sèche ou du mal à respirer. Il faut être confiné pour éviter le COVID-19. Rester à la maison, c'est prendre des soins de soi. Mais c'est sûr, il faut éternuer dans son coude pour ne pas effrayer les autres. Non. Il faut garder une distance si tu es avec les adultes. Il faut errer les pièces de la maison pour renouveler l'air de l'endroit, les gardant ainsi plus propres et réduisant la présence de toutes sortes de virus. Si vous sortez et achetez quelque chose à votre retour, il faut désinfecter au gel hydroalcoolique les paquets, les chaussures, les mains et les bras. Pour sortir, il faut porter un masque. C'est une norme et permet d'éviter la contagion. Il faut tousser et éténué dans sa coupe ou en un choix. Pour avoir une bonne santé mentale et physique, garder une routine, faire du sport ou faire une activité intéressante. Il faut les respecter les confinements. Ain't no virus or a chemical attack. It is real evil. If you see it, it takes on the form of your worst fears. Every contact we have had with the outside has brought us death. Social media has always been a powerful platform where people can be constantly harmed, mentally or emotionally. Not only that, but it is so huge that it can also make you happy or make you laugh because the power and influence it has amongst our population is enormous. And it just keeps growing, making our insecurities bigger every day, but also making our daily lives so much easier. That's how powerful it can be. With this in mind, you may wonder how this huge influence has positive and negative impacts on us. Well, there are many different websites whose purpose is to inform us about what's happening around the world. And today, I will be talking about how social media has kept us informed during the pandemic. Has social media used its power and importance in a good way or in a bad way? Basically, I'm going to be talking about the role of social media during COVID-19. Firstly, these platforms have been the way of communications between people. In fact, every website or app has the job of making communication so much easier. That's why we consider social media very important these times, because if it were in free, we wouldn't be able to stay connected with our most loved ones. Besides, talking about communication, if it wasn't for the technology we have, therefore, without social media, education will be impossible. Social media has avoided the lack of education during these times. Of course, it has its complications, because many people can't afford an electronic device to get connected with the classes. Plus, it has also been a marketing space. As far as I know, this is one of the most important roles it has because many people can work because of the quarantine and they have to start selling different things or objects in order to maintain their house. So far, social media has been a hero. Now let's take a peek on the other side of the coin. Despite all of these pros social media has, there is one huge negative aspect that can make everything worse, mostly today misinformation. Social media has always given wrong information in different areas. The pandemic has been polemic and scientists and doctors took a little bit of time to discover the reality of the virus, but social media didn't and as soon as it started, fake news started to appear every day and everywhere. In order to make clear this negative aspect social media has, I want to talk about the pandemic, the documentary that rapidly spread through social media and guess what? It is full of misinformation medical misinformation. 
This documentary was taken down from every platform, but many users kept uploading it. Briefly, what Plandemic says is that the virus came from a laboratory experimentation and that it is impossible that COVID-19 comes from a natural source. Furthermore, it stated that using gloves and masks could make people get more sick. Oh, and listen to this. It said that closing public spaces, mostly beaches, was crazy because of the healing microbes water had. But the real problem is that people are going crazy because they believe everything they see and read. Another thing I want to talk about is that we have trustworthy websites and TV channels that keeps us informed. Actually, this corresponds to the pretty side of the coin and other apps look, do too, like TikTok. TikTok had the capacity of first entertaining us, I always laugh. B, giving people the initiative of doing new things like exercising, cooking, or painting their rooms. Also, it has a COVID-19 information space in their app that has preventions and statistics. To conclude, social media, like everything, has both sides of the coin. Actually, I think that I have answered the question already, but yeah. Social media has managed to use its power in a negative and in a positive way. But remember, social media isn't just a platform. There are people be like there are people under the social media and what social media really says it's what people want it to say. So social media depends on us. If we want it to be good, it will be good. If we want it to be bad, it will be bad. I only want to know how prepared you are to the change. Because changes can sometimes bring you realities that you have never experienced before. If everyone thinks, nowadays, each one has a routinary life that doesn't allow ourselves to stop and think if we are happy, if we are writing our daily actions, or if that's what we want, so that we can get satisfied. Everybody dedicates itself just to live. But life can have fortuitous changes in the most unexpected moments, and sometimes these situations may improve or complicate us. I myself think that changes such as of house, school, job, among others, are difficult, but they can be done easier than if the change comes from a rare virus that obligates people to be in quarantine to avoid the spread of this contagious illness. In other words, COVID-19 is bringing a new reality, making us realize that our biggest enemies are humans. With this in mind, there is no doubt that due to the pandemic, many areas have been affected seriously. Obviously, one of it has been economy. Economy, a word that we constantly hear, refers to the state of a country or region in terms of the production and consumption of goods and services and the supply of money. As we know, economy is literally what moves the whole world and makes it function every single day. What I want to say is that economy is a global factor that is related in a direct or indirect way to every single person in their everyday life. Unfortunately, right now, economy is dying. It suffered a sudden fall since the pandemic started. Many countries are facing a crisis. It is very worrying that the International Monetary Fund announced that the coronavirus pandemic will turn global economic growth sharply negative this year. In fact, they anticipate the worst economic fallout since the Great Depression. To illustrate the alarming situation of what is happening, they even stated that by the time the pandemic is over, half of the world's population of 7.8 billion people could be living in poverty. People are losing their jobs. They are experiencing hunger. Some kids are unable to continue studying because their parents don't have enough money to pay the school. For example, here in Colombia, government says that they are going to do all what they can to help people. But the truth is that they don't do so. In spite of this abrupt change the country is facing, they just worry about keeping the highest salaries for congressmen and senators and also for trying to help the same big companies. They don't take into account that many families live from economy, and to hide their bad decisions, they give solutions that at the end are the worst for these people. 
On the other hand, in my opinion, one clear example of what Colombia must do is France, as it has demonstrated to be wise on its decisions. They had adapted to some economic adjustments and alternatives, such as helping people with their taxes of energy and water bills, and in some cases, abolishing them. They understand that everything has stopped, so taxes are also included here. By contrast, Colombia doesn't understand this because they keep collecting receipts when people are not receiving any income. I have to say that economy for my family is very important since we have a business called La Camisa Su Medida and the business is basically about designing your own shirt with your unique body measures. So you will never have problems when wearing your shirts. It already has 28 years, and although my grandfather is the founder of it, all my family works at it, so of course, currently economy is affecting us seriously. Since my family hasn't been able to work for about two months, we haven't received even 50 pesos, which means that we have had to take hard decisions. We have had to modify our lifestyle. For example, by changing the brands of the products we buy in the supermarket, finding out places to change one of the stores due to the cost of the lease, this means several employees because we don't have enough money to pay them, canceling several credit cards and bank accounts, considering selling one of our cards, among others. This is definitely something that we have never experienced before. To reiterate, I can say that for tourist changes that the coronavirus breath is showing us difficult moments that may make many individuals get desperate. What this pandemic has made us live is absolutely not the best, and what comes is also very difficult, as it can be seen when experts expose that the gross domestic product of Latin America and the Caribbean region, excluding Venezuela, is expected to fall 4.6%. Additionally, economy can wait until a vaccine is discovered. So that's why all people depending on it need urgently to find a solution, a way to keep going, and not giving up on what we can sometimes see as impossible. Thank you. Currently, I only want to know how prepared you are to the change because changes can sometimes bring you realities that you have never experienced before. If everyone thinks, nowadays, each one has a rutinary life that doesn't allow ourselves to stop and think if we are happy, if we are right in our daily actions, or if that's what we want, so that we can get satisfied. Everybody dedicates itself just to live. But life can have for tourist changes in the most unexpected moments and sometimes these situations may improve or complicate us. I myself think that changes such as of house, school, job, among others, are difficult, but they can be done easier than if the change comes from a rare virus that obligates people to be in quarantine to avoid the spread of this contagious illness. In other words, COVID-19 is bringing a new reality, making us realize that our biggest enemies are humans. With this in mind, there is no doubt that due to the pandemic, many areas have been affected seriously. Obviously, one of it has been economy. Economy, a word that we constantly hear refers to the state of a country or region in terms of the production and consumption of goods and services and the supply of money. As we know, economy is literally what moves the whole world and makes it function every single day. What I want to say is that economy is a global factor that is related in a direct or indirect way to every single person in their everyday life. Unfortunately, right now, economy is dying. It suffered a sudden fall since the pandemic started. Many countries are facing a crisis. It is very worrying that the International Monetary Fund announced that the coronavirus pandemic will turn global economic growth sharply negative this year. In fact, they anticipate the worst economic fallout since the Great Depression. To illustrate the alarming situation of what is happening, they even stated 
that by the time the pandemic is over, half of the world's population of 7.8 billion people could be living in poverty. People are losing their jobs. They are experiencing hunger. Some kids are unable to continue studying because their parents don't have enough money to pay the school. For example, here in Colombia, government says that they are going to do all what they can to help people. But the truth is that they don't do so. In spite of this abrupt change the country is facing, they just worry about keeping the highest salaries for congressmen and senators and also for trying to help the same big companies. They don't take into account that many families live from economy and to hide their bad decisions, they give solutions that at the end are the worst for these people. On the other hand, in my opinion, one clear example of what Colombia must do is France, as it has demonstrated to be wise on its decisions. They had adapted to some economic adjustments and alternatives such as helping people with their taxes of energy and water bills, and in some cases, abolishing them. They understand that everything has stopped, so taxes are also included here. By contrast, Colombia doesn't understand this because they keep collecting receipts when people are not receiving any income. I have to say that economy for my family is very important since we have a business called La Camisa Su Medida and the business is basically about designing your own shirt with your unique body measures. So you will never have problems where wearing your shirts. It already has 28 years and although my grandfather is the founder of it, all my family works at it. So of course currently economy is affecting us seriously. Since my family hasn't been able to work for about two months, we haven't received even 50 pesos, which means that we have had to take hard decisions. We have had to modify our lifestyle, for example by changing the brands of the products we buy in the supermarket, finding out places to change one of the stores due to the cost of the lease, dismiss several employees because we don't have enough money to pay them canceling several credit cards and bank accounts, considering selling one of our cards, among others. This is definitely something that we have never experienced before. To reiterate, I can say that for tourist changes that the coronavirus breath is showing us difficult moments that may make many individuals get desperate. What this pandemic has made us live is absolutely not the best. And what comes is also very difficult, as it can be seen when experts expose that the gross domestic product of Latin America and the Caribbean region, excluding Venezuela, is expected to fall 4.6%. Additionally, economy can wait until a vaccine is discovered. So that's why all people depending on it need urgently to find a solution, a way to keep going and not giving up on what we can sometimes see as impossible. Thank you. Theory that we're going through difficult times. This situation cut us out of base. Nevertheless, we know we are going to be safe thanks to our health professionals, people who are giving up their lives every day to protect us. They are sacrificing their families, times, and life to return everything back to normal. Additionally, each government is doing everything at their reach to avoid millions of deaths every day. One of these alternatives is called social distancing, a measure that works by increasing the space between people so we can avoid the spread of this contagious illness. Uh, the problem with self-quarantine is the fact that economy is dying. Um, the sudden fall of economy has affected the most, not to say it has affected everyone. Economy is a global factor related to the everyday lives. Is worrying that every country is facing such a crisis. Reason why I am going to inform you about this current debate that is taking place in every nation. Is it worth it to risk millions of lives to revive the economy or is it better to lose tons of money and save a few lives? COVID-19 spreads mainly among people who are in close contact. 
What I want to say is the spread happens when an infected person sneezes or talks and the droplets from their mouth or nose uh, are released into the air and land in the mouth or noses of people who were close to them. Uh, in other words, researchers have indicated that people who are infected but do not have symptoms also play an important role in the spread of the virus and is even more dangerous as you are not aware of the risk you're taking by being close to these asymptomatic people. Besides this, uh, the virus can get into your body without having direct contact with anyone. As this virus uh, lives in surfaces for hours or even for days, social distancing is designed to reduce the possibilities of touching an infected surface and then touching your face, mouth, nose and resulting in the infection of the coronavirus. The Wyoming researchers indicate that the current social distancing measures will reduce the contagion by 88% and that in turn will reduce the peak of the infection curve by more than a half. Helping avoid overwhelming healthcare systems and keeping the death rate below worst case scenarios. On the other hand, there are some people apoplectic about social distancing as they think you know, economy is more important. People are losing their jobs and a, a government is trying to fight against unemployment and hunger. For instance, France has adapted to some economic adjustments as the abolishment of taxes such as the water or energy bills. As companies aren't producing and customers aren't consuming, plenty of jobs are being at risk. But I'm happy to announce that Colombia is doing negotiations to avoid this crisis, such as paying 40% of the salaries to only a small or medium-sized uh, enterprises and employees. The question here is, uh, stop COVID-19 or revive economy? I think we can do both. Scientists have revealed that the spread of this virus isn't going to stop until a vaccine is discovered. As a consequence, economy can't wait until that happens. As economy uh, moves the world and keep it functioning. For that reason, we have to manage a way where economy, both economy and people, and people are safe. Mm, in my opinion, I have seen that Colombian companies don't fall behind. Uh, the majority is trying to reinvent themselves and make it work. Despite the situation, they are profiting. It's interesting to mention in advance, also some companies are sinking, some others are succeeding. Uh, an example of this is delivering companies such as Rappi or Uber Eats or even Netflix that has increased its subscriptions 50% tripling it, their incomes. Uh, that's all for today and Maria Bella and we remind you to stay curious.